In Viant, masking allows you to contain any asset within a maskable prop. <laughs> okay, but what does that mean? Why should you care? And how do you do it in Viant? Before I explain all of it, let me say this. After 10 years as a Viant user, I've come to the conclusion that I really only use masking for two things, but we'll come back to that later. Masking is a standard term within animation. Also outside Viant. Put simply, masking allows you to reveal portions of a layer above or below it. Almost like melting two things together or cut out something with another thing's edges. Let me give you an example. Let's say this trackpad is my mask and this pen is what I want to mask. If I put the pen on the trackpad and mask the two things together, everything outside the edges of the trackpad would disappear. Bottom decides. In the end, it looks like this. If I send the front to the back, the new bottom layer decides what gets cut off. Note that for this example, I used two maskable props. Normally you would use one mask and a character, for example. Then it's always the maskable prop that rules supreme and cuts off the character. Why do you want to use masking in Viant? Because it allows you to put things on screens and inside shapes. Those are pretty much the two things that I use masking for. Things on screens can be animated characters, images or video clips you've uploaded. And things inside shapes can be used for conceptual scenes like this one. Teamwork that is transparent and dependable also makes it easier to plan ahead and organize and prioritize your workday. Beyond's own guides also suggest that you could put people in windows or on ID cards or add backgrounds to shapes in split screen scenes. Your limitation? It's only your imagination. Thanks for the context, Rued, but I'm here to learn exactly how I do it in Beyond. So get to it. All right, I just thought you'd be better equipped to use masking if you understand. But okay, this is how you mask in Beyond. First, you gotta find the props that can work as masks, because most of the props cannot. Search for mask and you'll see most of them, including some actual masks, but don't mind them. Imagine I want to put an image on a computer screen. I choose this laptop, for example, and I notice the little cool mask icon that appears in the Whoa. toolbar. This lets me choose a second thing and I choose this uploaded image. And it's very small. Pull it to make it bigger until you're satisfied with how it fits inside the container. That's how you mask if you're a beginner. The faster way to do it is to just put one thing on the other, highlight both, right click and choose mask. Of course, one of the things has to be a prop that works as a mask. Otherwise, you won't even see the option when you right click. Beyond also allows you to replace masked content, double click to adjust size and position, and even remove the mask again if you decide that a group is a better option. If no part of your asset spills out over the edges of your container, grouping the two together is actually a simpler and faster option. Time for a quick Q&A. Can you mask more than two things together? No. Can you group mask things together? No. Can you add enter or exit effects to things inside a mask? No. What about to the entire thing as a whole? Yes. Will the action of a masked character continue into the next scene? No. So is there any point in knowing how to mask? Yes. I also know how to play the guitar riff from Smoke on the Water. But I almost never do it. It can get you kicked out of a guitar shop. But I still know how to play it. Should I get into a situation one day where it's needed? In the same way, it's always good to have masking in your tool belt so you know how it works and you can use it if you need it. A few extra thoughts on masking for screenshots on screen props. I think it works better and looks cooler to try to recreate the website layout using shapes inside Beyond. It takes more time, yes, but let's strive for excellence in a world full of mediocre content. For software training or other cases where you might want to mask a video clip to a screen, just consider the fact that people might watch it on a small screen already. And if you put your clip on an even smaller screen, it might not work that well. In my book, screen recordings should be as large as possible. Full screen, so you can see what's going on. That is Masking Explained. But there is a whole lot more to figure out in Beyond. In this video right here, you can watch the first 13 lessons from my course, Go Beyond Beyond. My name is Ruud Ries. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.